Hi, everybody. Welcome into the Quilt Lab. So if you have wanted to learn how to do your finished quilting in the hoop of your embroidery machine, today is a great video for you. Or if you're one of our regular followers here at Sew in Common, this is the video where we are going to quilt the July Block of the Month project. And it's a super simple uh, quilting project. And it's going to teach you all the basics. So whether you've been quilting for a while or you're brand new to it, this is a great video for you to be watching and for you to start. And um, all of the pieces that you need, the pattern for the project and the pattern for the quilting is all free on our website. And I'll tell you more about that later in the video. So let's get started. Hi, everybody. I'm Diana here at Sew in Common. Um, again, welcome into the Quilt Lab. I'm so glad to have you. Um, and we are today going to quilt our dirty snowball table topper, okay? Um, really quick and easy table topper to make. You only need to make in the hoop of your embroidery machine 15 of the snowball blocks. So let's just go over those for folks that are new. This is a snowball block or a snowball friendship block because this block is used a lot in friendship quilts. And then this is what I call the dirty snowball. Do you see the difference? In a traditional snowball, your center is white because you either write or embroider um, a sentiment there or your name or your date there. But the dirty snowball, do you see the difference? I put my um, print in the center and my white on the edges. And that's exactly what I did with all 15 dirty snowballs on our table topper. Um, I will link at the end of this video last Sunday's video where we go over um, how this is made and all. It was our last video for the month of July. I'll go, oh, I'll, I'll link that at the end so you can watch it. But today we are going to do the quilting for this. I'm going to show you a couple of the, I'm going to quilt a couple of the blocks for you and also that you can see it. Um, it's super easy to do. Um, but you just need to make 15. Now you can make them in any color combination you like, but I recommend that you do the dirty snowball style because you want it to either be scrappy like this, or if you choose a specific print fabric, you want that to be the main fabric, which is the center part of the snowball. Okay. Um, and you can, and like I told you last week, you can do these any way you want. I chose some random um, fabrics. I, like in mine, I have a lot of Lori Holt. I have some Kimberbell in there. I have some Amy Smart in there and a couple of others that are sold. I don't even remember who the designer is, if there ever was a designer name on them. So very scrappy, my idea. These are great to give as gifts at the holidays. They're great to make in holiday colors, regardless of what holiday you're celebrating. Maybe not the holidays at the end of the year. Maybe it's something uh, for summer or spring or fall, anything like that. This would be beautiful to make for Thanksgiving here in the U.S. I think you'd love to do that. Um, and so today we're going to do the actual um, quilting of it. And remember, this is also a little bit of a contest because if you create your table topper and you quilt it and you finish it by the last day in August and you post a picture at our Facebook page, So In Common, then you will be in the running for our contest to win our brand new Build a Quilt Basic Block Set 1. And the block set, this is just the written instruction in black and white, but they will come in color or you can see them on your computer gives you the half square triangle, the quarter square triangle, and the square in the set. Each one of those come in four different sizes so that you can make all kinds of quilts. That set alone, you could make hundreds of quilts. So you'll be in the running for that. I have three um, judges lined up uh, to judge that. I won't be judging them for the winner, but you just have to post your picture over on the Facebook page and type in a couple of lines about your piece, um, why you chose your fabrics, what inspired you. Were you inspired just because you wanted a chance to win the block set? That's cool. Write that in there too. Um, but that information and your picture 
will be seen by our judges, but your names will not because I've asked the judges not to look at my Facebook page until after they've done the judging. And because I know these three people really well, I can trust them that they're not going to do that. Okay. So if I don't, I don't want them knowing your names because I want this to be a blind judging, right? And they're just going to be looking because it's going to be, they're seeing pictures. If you want to add more than one picture, maybe you want to add a picture of your front and your back or a close up of how you centered in your quilting, anything like that. Those pictures are all allowed. Please do just maybe no more than three pictures though, if you're going to put pictures. Okay. So we are going to do today the quilting and we're going to talk about and learn how to use templates for accurate placement. Okay, I get a lot of questions. Well, how do you know where to put your piece and how to line things up on your embroidery machine? And that's a valid question, right? How do I do that? Well, the easiest way to do it is with a template. And these templates are going to be in, this template will be in the pattern that you get at the website so that you can make your template and use it as you're doing your quilting, okay? So we're going to go through all of this today. Um, we're going to go over to the camera by the machine and start doing the quilting now. And then I'll come back here to the main camera for when we finish up. So why don't we go over and get started? Okay, everybody, we're here at my um, my cutting table, and I have my quilt sandwich laid out, and I thought I'd go over the basics of the quilt sandwich with everybody in case you're new to quilting, or if you haven't done what I'm about to do, um, and you're a more experienced quilter, maybe you'll get some tips and tricks to help you as well. So a quilt sandwich is just that. It is your backing fabric, which I'm just using a white cotton for this piece, your batting, and your quilt top, okay, that's the sandwich. So you could think of your batting as your filling, I guess, between the two pieces of bread, which is your top and your backing fabric. Now, when I do a small piece like this, um, I usually just cut kind of randomly about two to three inches outside of my top. And that allows for any slippage when I'm doing the actual quilting. Something moves in the hoop a little bit or changes a little bit, I have plenty of room outside of that quilt top. If I have to like quilt off of it and onto this for a little bit and then back onto here to finish something, I've got plenty of space. When I do a bed quilt though, I'm really specific about my measurements. I always give myself four inches around the entire border of my quilt. Now, four inches might not be what you do if you're more experienced. You might do three. I would never go so low as two inches. I don't think that gives you enough wiggle room. I don't really think you ever need to go as high as five inches. So that's why I just kind of settled on four. Um, but for something small like this, in all honesty, I didn't even cut this. I think over here I've got three. Down here I've got about two and a half. I probably have three over here because I just eyeballed it, because when I'm done with the quilting, I'm going to trim this all off right at the edge of my quilt top and then bind it. So I don't need um, to be super accurate on that part. But I did press my backing fabric so it's nice and smooth. And then I added my batting. Now, you'll also know that I've got these four hashtags that I just made with a Sharpie right in the corner. And this is all going to get cut away. So it's not on the top. It's not going to hurt the quilt. It's just on that piece of batting. And the reason that is, is because that kind of tells me the general border of my quilt top. And why is because when I do small projects, I like to use a temporary basting spray adhesive. Um, I like the Oda 505. There's June Taylor. I mean, there are a ton of brands out there. So if you have a temporary fabric basting spray that you like to use, it should work just fine. I like this one because it's kind of a nice medium hold. It's great for small projects, but I have been known to do a couple of like sofa size quilts with this as well because it's strong enough to hold it. Some other basting sprays are a little more lightweight. They would work for this, but I wouldn't use them for anything bigger. So um, that's just a trial and error kind of thing I've done over the years. So I put these marks here so that when I roll back my quilt top, 
I can spray right on my batting and know generally where my outline is so that I'm not getting it out here where I don't need it or down here where I don't need it. And then I'm, I've am i got it right where I need it. And I typically only ever spray right on my batting. I don't spray on my top, okay? That's just me. So here, let's give it a try. I've already done the other side, but I'm going to spray this right. And I give it a good little spray, but I don't go crazy with it. And now I'm just gonna roll my quilt top back and straighten it out. Oh, wow, that went pretty good, even one-handed. And I'm just gonna smooth it. And I give it a couple minutes to sit so that it gets nice and um, attached. Now you can see, like right down here, gosh, there's quite a bit there that I didn't get. That came off a little too easy. So I'm putting a little bit more on there. Yeah, that's gonna be better. Now, there is another way that you can do your, um, oh, please excuse that. That's our door alarm going off. Please excuse that um, interruption. Um, there is another way that you can baste. It's a very old method. It's what I do on my full-size quilts. It's called the thumb and finger method. You put your hand flat out. I usually start in the center and work my way out and up and down. You put a quilting safety pin. They're kind of really big pins, almost diaper size, um, but they're made for quilting. They have a little bit of a cur arch in them. You put one at your thumb and one at your pinky finger, thumb and finger, and then you rotate. You've got one here at this thumb. Now you're going to put one over here at this finger, and now you're going to rotate. You've got one here at the finger. Now you'll do one at the thumb, and you kind of work your way around your quilt top, with that method and then you're basted that way. And then as you quilt, you take out any of them within your hoop um, so that you can quilt that section and just keep moving on. But I like for small projects, I just like the basting spray method. It's way, way easier. So now I have my, I didn't get my corner over here, but that's all right. There's enough of it. It's all nice and basted together. Now I can start my first hooping for um, quilting our design. And the first design, or the first space I'm gonna do, I always like to start in the center. So um, let me grab my template and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so I'm back with my template. And I've just rough cut it out from the paper, mm, roughly a quarter inch around. And then I put myself a little notch here in the bottom and turned that up because that's going to tell me that that's my bottom center. Now, um, with the one you get, you'll have a crosshair on it that will give you that. But if you ever print out a template and you don't have that, this is the way you can do it just to know where your bottom center is. Now, I've just used regular copy paper. You can use um, a sticky back template paper that you can buy at some um, fabric shops. Uh, there are a few different brands that make them. I like that, um, but I wanted to show you how you could just do it with um, regular copy paper because I know many of you probably won't have the template paper. The template paper, like I said, you, you print right on it, you cut it the same way, and then you peel it off, it's sticky back, and you continually can use it. However, you know what I'm gonna say. I just put a little bit of the spray adhesive on there. So I just literally just go, and that's it. I just, a tiny little bit. Now I'm gonna start in the center, and I'm gonna place this so that it is right where I want it. And I can view it right on top there. I know exactly where it's gonna be there. Now it's stuck there just temporarily. You could even use a piece of your um, your embroidery tape, just turn it into a loop like we um, do when we you know, make a loop of tape to stick on the back of something. But now I can um, put this in my hoop and when I get over to my machine, I can use my machine features to get right where this starts, and I'm pretty sure it starts right there in the center. I can line my needle up with it. I can even lower my needle to make sure it's in the right place, lift my needle, and then when I know it's in the right spot, 
I just pull that off and there's really no sticky left on there. And if you use sticky back template paper, you won't get sticky on there at all, okay? So let's go ahead and um, hoop and then go over to our machine and I will show you exactly how you can position that and find your center spot. Okay, folks, so here is my hoop, um, the bottom part of my hoop, the bottom frame, and here's my top frame. Now, I am using a magnetic hoop. I love magnetic hoops. This one is from Dime, but I know that there are other companies that make magnetic hoops, so please don't feel like you have to go out and buy this one because I'm not promoting it. I'm just telling you what I'm using. Um, you can use a traditional hoop too. You don't need a magnetic hoop. Magnetic hoops are just super nice when you quilt and you'll see why when we go over to the machine. Um, I don't ever have to take this piece off when I'm at the machine. But let me, so I know generally where I want this bottom hoop. I'm gonna see if I can do this one-handed. Ooh, that wasn't too bad. So I can feel it under here. So I know there's my bar that's gonna to attach to the machine. And I can kind of feel out here. And I feel if I didn't, if I weren't holding a camera and doing this at the same time, it would be a whole lot easier, but we're gonna make it through it. It's gonna be okay. All right, now I'm taking my top and I am going to find, I'm gonna switch hands here, get a good grip. Because I'm going to find out where, yep, where my bar is and just lay it on there. And then I can feel the rest of the hoop there. It's much easier when you can do it without the um, camera in your hand. But so there I am. Now I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to attach it to my machine because when I pull this back now, there's my bar. And it doesn't even matter really if I have this on here crooked because remember, I'm gonna use my machine features to find out where my center is and then I'm gonna do my stitching. So let's go and do that at the machine now.
back. Here I am. So was that not simple? Now this, like I said, is a very, very simple um, quilt pattern. I've got a few out on the website. A couple of them are a little more kind of um, stippled ideas, but I like this because in the end, I think this just gives that swirly look to the snowballs. And when I piece, I am a quilter that likes my piecing to take front or front and center, sorry, my front and center. And I like my quilting to sink into the background. Now, if that's not you with this design, use a top thread for the quilting that goes with um, one of the colors in here. So like if I were going to do this square and I wanted this color to show up, I would choose a vibrant orange for the quilting. I'd still leave the white alone for the back because that's my backing fabric. Um, but I would choose something really bright. So in something really scrappy like this, the way we're quilting it, you can quilt each and every one in a different color if you want to. If you get really excited about using all your pretty colors, go for it, go for it. So now when I was showing you how we set up the quilt sandwich, you could see that my template has no crosshairs on it. And I showed you how I did that little um, cut and that little tab in the bottom um, in case you ever have a template that doesn't have crosshairs. But this is the crosshair pattern you're going to get in your pattern pack. Okay. So again, just take and uh, cut out roughly a quarter inch all the way around. You will still have all of your um, crosshairs on it. This crosshair here with the double arrows is going to tell you where the top of the pattern is. So what I usually do if, you know, like if I don't want that to be the top or something, I will take a Sharpie. Let me grab one out of here or a marker. Any marker would do. But because I might cut those arrows off, I come in here and put the arrow within the pattern. And then that way I know where it's at every single time. I don't have to worry about cutting that little arrow that prints out on. And then you'll have the name up here at the top. Now you're going to cut that out. So maybe that's going to be a problem. I don't reuse these when they're paper. I throw them away. But if you want to reuse them, if you're trying to be really careful and um, conservative with your paper, then what I would do is write right on top of this snowball spiral quilt design right in there and then when i cut this out and all the rest of this paper gets put in the recycle bin then i know exactly what that template is for okay so that's a tip for me to you now i want to share with you all a, a tip that has nothing to do with quilting so much, but it has to do with working with your touch screens. Um, I will admit uh, that um, these were sent to me for free, um, but I have not been asked to do a review of them. I'm just reviewing them and I'm sending the company information, but I know you can get these on Amazon. Okay. These are stylists and that's exactly what they're called stylus pen if you look them up that's what you look up this package had four so there are different colors i don't have great fingertip prints fingerprints so on phones where you do this kind of stuff or screens like my kindle and stuff it eight times out of ten will not pick up my fingerprint it's from years of working in a lab and working with chemicals and things long before we started using um, gloves and stuff. So these, I love, these are not smart pens, okay? They're just stylus. Um, and there's an end, there's kind of a, a medium and a bigger end. And I love them because I can work on my phone. I have another computer screen that I design on that is a touch screen. I can use this so it makes it much easier for me. Um, and because this package came in different colors, purple, pink, green, and blue, I can like, so the cover of my, my old Kindle cover used to be pink. I would have probably used that for this one. 
this purple, pretty purplish one I've got over here. And so in regard to what we're doing over here on my screen, I can just click on the buttons and things and this works on it. I don't, when I try to do it with my fingertips, I have more of a problem and I don't wear uh, acrylic nails or gel nails. These are my own nails. As you can tell, I've got one broken off right here because I was in the garden the other day and accidentally snipped it with my gardening shears. Um, but when I, when my nails grow a little bit, sometimes that makes it even harder for me to get. And I don't like to click and accidentally chip my nails and stuff. So I find these really helpful. That's just a tip from me to you. Okay. Um, but yeah, all you look up is stylus pen. And you can tell on the back here, it shows you all the different things. They don't have an embroidery machine, but I'm going to tell them that in my review. Embroidery machines, they're perfect for that. So these pretty much work on any kind of thing like that. All right. That's just a little extra I wanted to share in case you have the same problem that I have with hardly no fingerprints. Um, I have a funny story about that. You can ask me sometime about the time our friends asked me to be a sponsor for them adopting a baby from another country. And the FBI couldn't get my fingerprints. Excuse me, just having a little coffee. That was hilarious. Yeah, I had to go through a lot to get that. Um, they actually had to like look at my fingerprints underneath a microscope. It was wild. Um, but um, yeah, there's more to it, but I, I'll tell you. If you want to know, you can ask me offline. Anyway, so I wanted to tell you that this has been our Quilt Lab Snowball Spiral Quilting video. Please remember that if you get your table topper finished by August 30th and you post a picture at our Facebook page, So In Common, you will be entered in a contest to win our brand new Build a Quilt Basic Block Set 1. This is, I print, printed mine out in black and white, but this is the written information for all of it. You get all of the digital files. You get four sizes for your half square triangle, your quarter square triangle, and your square. There is a complete full featured um, how-to video that's a private video that goes with this set. Um, you get your templates. You get your coloring sheets so that you can color your squares in, see what kind of fabric colors you want to use before you go and cut your fabric and then end up going, oh no, I cut all that beautiful fabric and it's not gonna work for whatever reason. So throw your picture onto a sew and comment, it has to be complete through the binding, please. And I know that you can get that done by the 30th of August because I'm gonna sit here and I will finish quilting this in the next hour. And then I will, um, my husband has to go out and do something with a, a group that we uh, work with later tonight. I will do the binding then. And so I'll have pictures up sometime this weekend, but it's also county fair weekend here. So tomorrow we are going to go and spend the day at the county fair, which I look forward to. I love the county fairs. Um, so um, that'll be up. So I know you all can get that done. However, if you are new to quilting, and any of this was confusing or you have additional questions, please contact me at support at sewincommon.com or just leave a note right here on this video and I'll get it and I'll get back with you absolutely as soon as possible. Okay, so um, one other thing I want to ask you, it's I know it can be a big ask, but I appreciate it more than you know. Um, because one, it tells me that you all are enjoying these things and also um, allows the algorithm for YouTube to kind of pick up my stuff more to get it out there to you guys. And that is to subscribe to our channel, please. If you like quilting, if you like these projects, if you liked our free blocks of the month, please subscribe. We still have a quilt to do at the end of this year. And I have another fun project coming for scrappy quilting, like real scrappy quilting. Um, uh, later this year as well. So we still have a lot to do in 2023. And um, uh, you can also check out, of course, our website, sewincommon.com, but subscribe to the channel and click the bell. You get a couple of choices for setting your notifications, either to personalize what you want to see or just hit the everything one. And that way you get notified whenever I put up content, um, a full video, a shorts video, um, 
uh, just a post here on the site, all of that information so you can stay up to date with us with what we're doing here. And I appreciate you all so much. We are getting close to 4,000 subscribers now, and um, that's just since January. I know for some of those big groups and all, that's not a lot, but for us here, it's tremendous, and I am so thankful. So please uh, go ahead and subscribe to the group. We'd love to have you. Thank you all so much for joining me for this July project and for the quilting project. And you can go over to the website now. Again, let me put that back up, sewingcommon.com, and you can download your free quilting pattern. If you still need your free snowball block pattern, it's there as well. It's the July block of the month pattern um, called the Friendship Snowball Block. That's this one. You will need a five by seven hoop for piecing this in the hoop. Um, I used I use a six by six a hoop when I piece and I have a six by six magnetic hoop. That's what I used for my quilting. You could put this on a bigger hoop and then just move it around and quilt more than one snowball at a time in one hooping. Um, because it's so easy to move around with this particular hoop, I just use a smaller hoop. I feel like I get better control that way and did that. Alrighty. So that is everything for this video. Don't forget, Sunday is our first week in August video. And you know what that means. It means we get a whole new block to do, another free block of the month coming. I hope you enjoy it. I think you will. I think you'll like August block. And I will tell you now that August is the last block of the month for 2023 because coming in September, we have a project. In October, we have the quilt because we're not doing the quilt in November and December. I don't do that to people. I don't have us do those big projects during the holiday months at the end of the year. It's just too much. It's too much for me. And I know it's too much for you guys. So the September or the August block is our last free block of the month. And then in uh, September, we have a whole new project coming. It's that scrappy one I've been telling you about. And then in October, we're going to start working on our quilt. Okay. So um, still, like I said, still a lot to do. Please, if you haven't already, go and grab your uh, Build-A-Quilt set. Um, it is still at the introductory price, but that will be going away um, in just a few weeks. Um, so please, if you haven't, grab this um, if, uh, if you haven't gotten it already, because you're going to want this with this one set. You can make hundreds of quilts. From small quilts to full-size quilts, you name it, you can make it with just those three blocks. That's what I intended when I started that out, to give you the, the most often used blocks in quilting. All right, I've spoken enough. I'm going to tell you all right now, go sew life beautiful. I can't wait to see you Sunday. Bye for now, everybody.